I would hope if anybody viewing this doesn't know me at all, would say, you know, I can be my own person. I can think this through. I can ask for help. I can work with a mentor. I can do things my way. I don't have to follow the pack. I can be myself. And I think you should be. I've been in the Halstein industry 50 years. I started in 1965, right after high school, with a small artificial insemination co-op in northeastern Pennsylvania here. The manager offered me a job with conditions. And the biggest condition was is that I would have to read every night before I went to bed and become self-educated. And I, I worked uh, a little over one year and got drafted in the Army during the Vietnam conflict. During that time, they had made another merger with Maryland, West Virginia to become Sirepower. And uh, the manager of Sirepower kept sending me the newsletters, the monthly newsletters, and a note once in a while and, and so forth. And when I uh, got out of the Army in, uh, in 1968, I was, of course, offered a job back there. And it was at a time where there was a lot of uh, mergers and consolidation between the AI companies, particularly the co-ops. And I was packing semen tanks on the very best bull in, and shipping it to California for 25 cents a little glass ampule. It was getting sold in California for $7. So it prompted a lot of thought on my side that, well, I might better get into the semen marketing business. Well, I started as a distributor on uh, July 15th, 1971 for Carnation Breeding Service. And I, I grew that business and a year later, when they bought Genetics Incorporated and changed their name to Carnation Genetics, well, they said, you're no longer going to be in business. The district manager was a man by the name of Paul Dan. And I said, well, the best job you could have is join me, because I'm going to keep on selling semen. And he said, well, how are you going to keep on selling semen? I said, I'll find a supplier. So I, between Christmas and New Year's, I made arrangements with uh, Tri-State Breeders in Wisconsin, which was a co-op, all West Breeders in the state of Washington. We ended up, Taurus, becoming a distributor for those two companies and continuing on. My partner, Herb Steele, he started with me in 1978. Taurus felt that we had to ensure our own destiny. And the only way to ensure our own destiny was have our own sire lineup. My idea was, is if we did so, that would prove to the industry that we were in business and planned on staying in business. After building the facilities here in 1982, to growing a progeny test program that was competitive and procuring bulls in any manner, shape, or form that we could. We would do anything reasonably feasible to make a deal with a Holstein breeder that had the, the right genetics because we had to compete with the big organizations. And we trained hundreds of farmers to breed their own cows. We ran an AI school for several years, once a month. That was a good way to make them a, a Taurus customer. The bull that put us on our map was a bull called Walita Citation R. He was a breeder proven bull. The bull got popular. He was the number one type bull. I think longer than any bull in the history of the breed was the number one type bull. And, and in reality, that bull paid for these bull barns down here. And it paid our, our, our partners on him pretty good to update their farms. But 
that also helped us to, even if Taurus was a little organization, if they had the right bull to market, we could get the semen sold. So when Halstein was discussing the idea of Halstein Marketplace, ours, it coincided with the period of time where major AIs were trying to control more genetics and thumb bulls weren't available uh, as free agents. They were only available if you signed a contract and the future of any offspring and so forth. I think the idea and part of being an association was to, to help create opportunities for your membership. So I think it was a good move on the association's part to one, listen to their membership, two, create opportunities for their members, and to help create a future. So Marketplace Sires was started and developed with the initial concept that the breeder would own the bull, the breeder would pay for producing the semen and housing the bull. Holstein Marketplace would uh, market semen on the bull. And believe me, I know that you better be listening to the breeders because if they have confidence, more often than not, they're the ones that are right. It's not what's on paper. It's not what somebody some genetic evaluation is telling you. If, if you're dealing with a real down-to-earth, grassroots Holstein breeder that wants to tell it like it is and be honest with himself, those are the kind of people you get the best bulls from. So this is an opportunity for them to put a, a bull into an AI program and sell semen. The beauty of being involved with the Holstein breed allows for that diversity to, to continue. I'm stubborn enough to want to encourage everybody that's breeding Redshirt Holsteins to be mindful of the fact that they should do a lot of their own thinking, do a lot of their own matings, breed cattle their way. Don't get tied up in the fact that uh, there's only one way to do it, because there's not. The only way we got to where we are with Redshirt Holsteins and with Redshirt Holsteins being the breed of choice around the world is because independent thinking breeders bred them their way and proved that it could be the right way.